of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, welcome to this holy celebration of Monty Thursday. The mystery of the celebration of this day is summed up by St. John in one word. Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 1, he loved his own. He loved them to the end. He loved them to the end and gave it as a command, love others to the farthest ends. He gave a definition for love. Self-sacrifice in favor of the other. Dying to oneself that the other may live. That shall be the style of the thinking of the disciples of Jesus. The new commandment, the only commandment Jesus said today. And he showed us how to practice it in our day-to-day -day life. Bending over, bowing down, be humble for the sake of the other. Washing the feet and giving oneself to the other for the nourishment of the other. He gave his own body and blood for us to eat and drink. And thus, he instituted the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. He also instituted the sacrament of holy priesthood, leadership in the church. Leadership, self-forgetting, Self-giving leadership. The sacrament of priesthood is established today. Let us open our hearts that that love may be poured into us. That our hearts may throb in the same rhythm of the love of our God. We would understand how far removed we are from our God. We want to ask God's pardon. And we want to ask the grace to be able to love as he loved. Let's say it together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten son when about to hand himself over to death entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity the banquet of his love grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8 and 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man 
must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle around your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honor of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honor. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The blessing cup that we bless is the communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for His goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. The blessing call that we bless is the communion with the blood of Christ. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bones. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all His people. The blessing call that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The 
second reading a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26 this is what i received from the lord and in turn passed on to you that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial for me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said this cup is a new covenant in my blood whenever you drink it do this as a memory of me until the Lord comes therefore every time you eat this bread and drink this cup you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Glory and praise to Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He put a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing? You do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. 
Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he's clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for I indeed am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Amen. Amen. I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. My dear sisters and brothers, Holy Thursday marks a revolution in human thinking and human living. A revolution, a change, a sudden change in fact, a change in the orientation of the vision of life. You know, the historians tell us that a certain dynamics, dynamics to dominate others is basic to human nature. From the beginning onwards, if you have seen those amazing nature videos. You would have been shocked by the cruelty among animals. The way the animals go about tearing others apart in order to dominate. And this grace to dominate others has characterized human life all the time. And this tendency to gain power aggressively, to grab everything from others and make it his own, one's own. Power, authority, position, name, fame, money. And the more I have, the more I can dominate others. This master-slave dynamics. When I dominate others, I become the master. You all become the slaves. And you're bound to obey me. You're slaves. There may not be chains on your hands and your feet, but there are chains put in your heart. You're bound to please me. You're bound to obey me. You're bound to tow my line. Your freedom is taken away. I dominate. I dictate terms. In all subtle ways, this dynamics, master-slave dynamics, has been operative in human relationships. A German philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, has said, the basic drive in human nature 
is this tendency. He calls it will to power. To gain power. To gain authority over others. And thus, dominate everyone around. And he said, when I, using my own opportunities, oppressing others, grab power and authority, I become the superman. And all of you slaves. And this tendency, cruel tendency, once such a system is established, I will make sure that system is maintained. You know, when someone becomes an MLA or chief minister, however old he is, he would demand a seat in the election. He would demand only I can rule well. They would say it's service to the people, but really, it is the basic animal drive to come to power, to dominate everyone. Nietzsche said it two centuries ago, but already in the fourth century, St. Augustine said it. The lust to dominate others, libido dominandi, is what characterized the famous Roman civilization. But dear friends, what is the central theme of the Bible, of the history of salvation? The central theme of the history of salvation is God coming down powerfully to cut at the root of this dynamics of master and slave. Set man free, cut the chains. As we know, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. But God came down in a mighty manner. And what a might was shown. And that Passover, we read it, the first reading. To make it a celebration, God has come down mightily and cut our chains and we celebrate it and we remember it every year. The most famous festival of the Jews was and is the Passover celebration. Freedom. And they crossed the Red Sea. They felt the waters of the Red Sea. Liberating them. A refreshing experience. And God wants us to have this. That refreshing experience of the waters of the Red Sea leading us from slavery to freedom. And Jesus, Son of God, the young rabbi, when he inaugurated his public ministry, he spoke of freedom. I'm come. I'm come from God anointed by the power of God, Spirit of God, to set you free. You will have no chains anymore. And he spoke of the kingdom of God. Always on his lips, the kingdom of God. A new way of living. No masters, no slaves. You're all equal, the children of God, Abba. And he said, spelling out, the details of the new kingdom cutting at the root of the master-slave dynamics. Not to quarrel for high positions. Not to grab authority. And when you, when you give a banquet call, the poor, the marginalized, understand they are equal to you. Of course, he did eat with masters of the time, the Pharisees and uh, the scribes, but he did it. And when he did it, he told them, when you give a banquet, call the marginalized. All the time raising up the dignity of being human, being a child of God. What is he doing by the preaching of the kingdom of God over 
turning the master slave dynamics and at the climax of his life what we celebrate today he called his disciples together and he sat with them a revolution that started established that night the passover night what god had done centuries ago for his people in egypt the passover meal when that passover meal was celebrated something beautiful something revolutionary that jesus did he got up from the seat the rabbi sits on the seat of authority wearing the garment of honor he got up from the seat and removed his mantle the mantle of honor and he took basin in his hands water and knelt at the feet of the apostles and began to wash you know my dear friends the problem with us today we get used to this and we are so used to it as a liturgical function it does not mean much to us in our day to day life it was so unnerving for simon peter terribly unnerving he said oh no you can't do it to me simon peter could not take it you know for 3 years simon peter loved jesus as a dear friend and respected him as the master as the lord he said you are my lord son of god and simon peter had seen and heard the marvelous things the lord has said the lord has done now the master is kneeling down to wash the feet and simon peter felt the water flowing down his feet let me give an analogy say a host we respect we honor he invites us and every one of us seated all in three piece suit formal dinner and suddenly the host the man of honor he gets up removes his jacket removes his tie and he kneels down to polish your shoes what would you feel you least expect this embarrassed embarrassed what was the lord doing overturning the master slave dynamics you call me master you call me lord sm but how to be a master by becoming a slave humble service forgetting your dominion over others and bow your head bend your knees that's what the kingdom of god is jesus said simon peter if i don't wash you you will have no inheritance with me what is the inheritance that jesus brought to give to the world the inheritance of self forgetting self sacrificing love simon you must go through that refreshing experience of the water of the red sea upon your feet what the people of god experienced an initiation ceremony into the kingdom of god and after that he takes the bread the passover unleavened bread he breaks it he gives it to them and said take it and eat it this is my body he took the cup of wine and blesses it and gives it and says 
take it and drink it. This is my blood. This is me. This is my life. This is all what I am. I'm not keeping anything to myself, not even a drop of blood. I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm giving it all away. Jesus giving himself away. Summing up all the life and teaching and ministry of Jesus in that moment of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus giving himself away. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, today, as we celebrate, for us, this is a celebration. As we celebrate the washing of the feet and the Holy Eucharist, we must make it our life. What is happening to us in our day-to-day -day life? It's not the master-slave dynamics dominating a way of thinking, a style of living. The, the husband would say, you are the wife. You must respect me. You must love me. You must wake up early morning and give me a cup of tea before I wake up. As a husband, I have a right to sleep longer. You must iron my clothes. You must love me. You must serve me. You must care for me because I am the husband master. A master. The one who thinks himself as master will make everyone as a slave. Or the wife. Perhaps she's earning more. Perhaps she's appreciated. She's the new president of the parish council. You, husband, I have much to do, responsibilities to fulfill. People appreciate me, so you better sweep the floor. You better wash the plates. I'm not saying who should wash the plate, who should sweep the floor. What I'm saying is, what is the mentality, the attitude? Making others slaves. When I'm not respected, I will hit you and make you respect me. If you don't do that, I will go for a divorce. And I will complain, my wife, my husband does not respect me. And the counselor will ask you, ah, why don't you respect? Well, you have your reasons. And the counselor will tell you, fine, if you can't respect your husband, if you can't love your wife, you may divorce. Well, what is the complaint of the children? What's the complaint of the wife? What's the complaint of the husband? What's the complaint everywhere? I'm not respected. I'm not appreciated. I'm not loved. I'm not cared for. I, master. This night, the Lord cut at the root of this master slave dynamics, giving us a new direction of thinking, a new vision of life rooted in love, self forgetfulness, total self giving. That's what the kingdom of God is. And if we do not experience the waters of the Red Sea refreshing my feet, I will never learn this. What God has done for me. There's something beautiful that John Paul II said, Pope Saint John Paul II, your being increases to the measure you give it away. Your being increases to the measure you give it away. Your love increases the measure you give it away. You love others. Your self respect will increase. To the measure you respect others. Your joy in your heart will increase to the measure you make others happy. Your comfort of life will increase to the measure you make others comfortable forgetting your own comforts. The Pope sums up the Last Supper, the Passover meal. And today, 
as we celebrate this beautiful feast, the core of Christianity. Let's open our hearts for the love of the Holy Spirit to flow into us and fill us that we may learn to obey the new commandment. The only commandment, Jesus said. Moses gave ten commandments. Son of God gave only one commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you. The way Jesus gave his life away. Be ready to give myself away. Do not grab. Do not try to grab love and respect and honor. But give it. And open your heart for all the love of God to flow into your hearts. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, what Jesus did in the Last Supper, we re-experience on this altar now. I'm going to wash the feet of my brothers here. All of them have dedicated their life for the service of God in the divine retreat center for years. They do not look to what they would get. They want to give themselves and as I wash their feet with great respect and love. My brothers and sisters, if you are in your house, take a piece of cloth, dip it in water. Could be your, your kerchief. Dip it in water and kneel at the feet of your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, and wash. Your tears are bound to make the towel wet because we have shed a lot of tears during this year. Tears of sorrow being humiliated by the other, being insulted, being uncared for. You complained, you shouted, then you wept tears. All those drops of tears shall now make the towel wet and wash away. Wash away. All that anger, all that hatred, all that sadness. Let this be a Passover experience. We pass over from being a master to a slave, a servant of God, a handmaid of the Lord. Let us be very calm and silent in the presence of God. That this scene, Jesus bending over, washing the feet, may be etched in our hearts. That we may look at it and learn to love and live. I who made the moon and stars will kneel to wash your feet. This is my command. Amen. Mm -hmm.
We celebrate Jesus' intense and ultimate love for his people on this Holy Thursday when he instituted the Holy Eucharist and priesthood. Let us place all our needs before him so that he will fill us with his love. Your response shall be, Lord, fill us with your love. Lord, Lord fill, fill us, us with, with your, your love. love. We pray for the church and all its pastors that they may be channels of God's love to the world through their ministry of preaching and teaching. We pray, Lord, Lord fill, fill us, us with, with your love. love. We pray for priests and those aspiring to priesthood and religious life that they may be nourished and strengthened by the daily Eucharist and the word of God. We pray, Lord, Lord fill, fill us, us with your love. love. We pray for Christians all over the world that different denominations may come together and be united under the binding force of the Holy Eucharist, the body of Christ. We pray, Lord, Lord fill, fill us, us with, with your love. love. We pray for our parish community that our lives may be a witness to the love of Christ who was broken and shared for the life of the world. We pray, Lord, Lord fill, fill us, us with, with your love. love. We pray for the dead that their souls may be purified and become worthy to participate in the eternal banquet in heaven. We pray, Lord, Lord, Lord fill, fill us, us with your love. love. In a moment of silence, let us pause to offer on this altar all our personal prayers all the aches of our heart, all the needs of our family, everything that bothers and worries us, knowing fully well that the Lord cares for our hunger, our thirst, our pain, and our need. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of the most holy Eucharist and priesthood May we value these gifts and experience your blessings in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
we place them on your altar, Lord, today. Make them worthy of your love. Send your spirit from above. Sanctify these gifts, O oh Lord, we brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us the Lord we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries that for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Hosanna in the high, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the high, Hosanna in the high, Hosanna in the high. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, the Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all the bishops and priests and religious and lay leaders everywhere in the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the confidence of the children in the love of our Heavenly Father, let's all pray to him in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, our Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord. Be always with you and, and with your spirit. So for each other, a sign of peace and love.
hope of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us all your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not, not worthy that you should enter unto my room. My roof, but only say, say the word, the word my, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. You are precious to me. Precious to me, you are dear to my heart. I will love you forever, forever, forever. Remember not your past anymore. Something new I'm doing for you in the wilderness. Desert rivers will flow, will flow, will flow. Fear not, I have redeemed you. The waters will not overwhelm me. Burning flames will not consume you. I will be ever beside you. open our hearts in love. Let God's love fill us and remain with us forever. Let's pray this prayer of the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire earnestly to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there in my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, the celebration of the Holy Thursday ends here. The Holy Eucharist will be taken to the tabernacle. And here in the Divine Retreat Center, we will continue to pray for you, adoring, worshiping the Lord in a very special way that the wounded humanity may be healed and all our families may be able to live in peace and joy with the certainty that the Lord loves us. The Lord will intervene miraculously to save us. Love so amazing.
losing has come to save me. This love changes everything. Father, you found me. Your goodness surrounds me. I'm yours for eternity. Surrounds me, I'm yours for eternity. 